Tonight on Once Upon a Sport, a group of young rugby league players are about to embark on the journey of a lifetime, one that will test them physically and emotionally, while providing an experience that will enable them to take on life's sternest challenges. Young Guns concept come about probably two years ago with Jason's idea about helping kids, trying to get them through to certain levels in their life. The need for Young Guns for our area was basically getting kids off the couch, giving them a bit of discipline, giving them some guidelines through their tough years and just, yeah, get involved and be a part of a team atmosphere. I joined the Young Guns mainly to improve my activity levels and to collaborate with younger people from, as, a, as it ranges from 12 to 16 year olds. Oh, the reason why I joined Young Guns just to get the basic skills and knowledge about my health, you know. As much as I wanted to gain fitness and stuff, just knowledge as well. Oh, I joined Young Guns because it's a great program. I wanted to improve my footy skills and become a better person at the same time. Tang teaches us a lot of good things. We like ball skills, helps us with our fitness, teaches us a healthy diet and stuff, what to eat. My training's three days a week. Pretty hard, pretty hard getting up in the morning, sleeps early. With the sessions at Mooba Beach, the Monday mornings, Wednesdays and Thursday mornings at La Perouse Public School. Some of the things I get out of being in Young Guns are like teamwork, courage, because we're always doing exercises where we're working together and pushing each other along. Jace really pushes us at training. He makes us go to our breaking point and beyond that. Well, for me, the Young Guns allows you to improve your discipline levels through getting up early in the morning and just participating in a range of different activities from fitness to skills work. Oh, just the mateship, you know. Waking up every morning seems tough, but you know, in the morning it's good. Have breakfast with the boys, it's nice. It's a good way to start the day. You learn a lot about camaraderie and helping out each other, and it's not all about yourself, just help the community and everyone out. Just allows you to also make new friends and promote more social skills, and it's just an enjoyable program to be a part of. On one November morning in 2014, the young guns left for the great unknown of Papua New Guinea and its formidable Kokoda track. For many of them who hadn't been out of Australia, this promised to be an experience that was eye-opening, confronting and hopefully rewarding. Then a trip to PNG will give these kids an opportunity to realise what their potential is. Um, everyone's got boundaries, you know, mentally, physically, um, and I think the earlier they can realise how to break those boundaries and deal with it in scenarios that they're not comfortable in, that's going to mould them into better people. Mate, I hope it instills what Jason's been trying to instill in them, and that's camaraderie. Look after your mates. If they need a hand, put it out. That's basically what it's all about. And I think from what I've read about this trek, that's what the soldiers did that got us to where we are now. And I think these guys, if they pick up a portion of that, we've done our job. And with over three hours flight time, it was a good opportunity to find out what the lads already knew, or thought they knew, about the country they were about to be immersed in. Papua New Guinea is a third world country. It's got a lot of history behind it. Uh, I know that. We fought a war over there. Big thing in the World War II and Australia took on what, the Japanese in the Dakota Trek. I know that there's Fuzzy Wuzzies there. and The Fuzzy Wuzzies? Locals over there, they helped us. Uh, it's the only country in the world where rugby league's a national sport. I've heard there's not much to eat there, just rice and grass. It's, it's boiling, apparently. It's yeah. Really hot. Really hot and... Um, and really cold at night. Yeah. Uh, you can get malaria if you don't take malaria tablets. We, yeah. We've got a lot to go through, so it'll be good. It'll be hard. It'll be hard. But a good experience. Once landed, the young guns will have little time for sightseeing and they'll be glad of their 6am training sessions as tomorrow promises an early start to what may be the hardest physical challenge they've ever faced. Alright, day one, heading to the start of the big trek with the boys. 
morale would be uh, morale would be pretty high at the moment. Friday we're going to the Kokoda Trail to start our walk, start to trek out for tonight, stay the night and come back in. Feeling pretty drained, had a bad sleep last night, pretty hot, but you know, it should be good to get out of here. I think the boys are going to be pretty well prepared, they're going to be able to handle it alright. I've got my um, questions about whether the older group are uh, going to survive or not. <laughs> Once at the departure point, the young guns make their final preparations before being introduced to local carriers who will be assisting them along the trail. So just introduce yourself and then they'll link up with you once we start, which will probably be about another 20 minutes now. And one very important member of the group who will be joining the lads on the trek is league legend Matt King, who has for some time been a devoted young guns mentor. Obviously, coming from a professional sporting background, I feel as if I've got a responsibility to the kids and um, the Young Guns is a great foundation. Um, you know, they pride themselves on hard work and discipline, so um, I suppose this is, this is a real testament to that work, walking Kokoda, so uh, it's going to be an adventure, obviously. Uh, the locals have been enormous, um, so friendly. Every second person's got their hand up waving with a big smile, so if, um, if the trek's anything like the hospitality we've had, it's going to be awesome. I'm really confident about the trail, you know, we prepared well for this. Um, we're going to experience things we haven't seen before. It'll be a bit tough, but I think everyone will pull through. Um, as I said, we prepared well, so that's all that matters. The trek has begun, and as the group walk out into the great unknown, trek leader John Nalda provides a quick reality check of what the young guns will very soon be up against. People come, don't, don't really understand exactly what they're walking into. It's, it's the unknown and it's like trying to explain to someone what the rose smells like. You can't tell them. They've got to get here and do it. You can tell people how hard it is. The biggest risk they've got to watch is just keeping the head and the feet in exactly the same spot. A lot of slippery rocks, especially crisscrossing Wiley Creek. People get the thing about trying to keep their feet dry and start hopping on rocks that it can be quite slippery. So yeah, we've had a lot of injuries there in the past, but as long as they concentrate, it's really not going to be an issue. While it's a, a two days, we've got some very steep climbs both directions. The climb up emitter on the other side is one of the hardest, can be one of the hardest on the track. So they might think it's a short little walk, but there's going to be plenty of pain ahead of them. The young guns are now well and truly into the trek, and not surprisingly, are starting to feel the physical strain of the punishing walking conditions. We're not even halfway through the tracks, probably about a quarter of the way. We've had some few ups and downs, a lot of people falling over in the first probably five to ten minutes. It's been tough. There's a lot of challenges we had to get through. Oh, just the steep hills, the slipperiness, just walking through the water, not tripping over rocks. Uh, we're three hours in, just had lunch. We've still got at least six hours ahead of us. It's pretty full on in the jungle. Um, I underestimated how tough it was going to be. Well, uh, what's ahead is pretty much what's all around us. It's just more shrubs and bushes and trees. At the moment, it's just all mud, pure mud. Rocks everywhere. There's rocks, mud, tree trunks. Um, it's really tricky to, to get your footings and your bearings. A lot of sense of like, just dying. Pretty much the same stuff we've been going through for the past two hours already. It's just going to keep going. It's just, it's just great. It's just fantastic. The uphill is all about your legs and your cardio, but downhill, I hate it. The footing's really slippery. The terrain's really uneven. Oh, so it's pretty tough going, but um, I can imagine when you finish, the sense of accomplishment's going to be enormous. I'm hoping it gets easier, but probably will get harder as we go higher up into the mountain. Predictions? More likely hard, so yeah, we'll see how we go. At the same time that the Young Guns push themselves along the arduous track, another group of trekkers containing Young Guns coach Jason Pedersen, as well as Young Guns supporter and South Sydney Rabbitohs head coach Michael Maguire, are coming to the end of the eight-day journey. Uh, we're at day seven and uh, it's been one hell of a trek. Uh, starting way back uh, you know, on day one, uh, from every hill to uh, every down, it's, uh, yeah, you're literally walking up vertical climbs and then uh, coming down the opposite side, down to creeks, day in, day out. 
but uh, it's been a great challenge. Uh, we're now into our last day, day seven. Uh, it's been pretty gruelling. So the young guns, uh, we're going to be meeting them up a little bit later. Um, I think they, they'll be tracking okay. There'll be a few of them there that are uh, sore and sorry for themselves because they've never done anything like this before. Um, but you know, it's just that's the mindset challenge that we, we're sort of trying to get out of these kids so they can develop and be better people. Well, the, the, the men they are, um, they'll, they'll push through. For me, it's actually the joy of um, watching kids grow up and get experiences like they have. You know, it's helping kids before they even actually get to footy. And, and Jace does a great job with uh, the Young Guards kids. He, you know, he's very committed to, to looking after them. And, you know, it's experiences like that that, you know, I get a bit of a kick uh, myself outside of footy, that just seeing young people grow up and become good people. And it's something that I like to try and instill in what I do in the coaching ranks as well. So, you know, to be able to help out young kids of the area where I'm living, um, it's just giving back a little bit uh, to those people. Meanwhile, the young guns, assisted by their local helpers, continue to push hard, but are about to get a sombre reminder of the sacrifices made by the carrier's relatives in shaping the Australia we know today. The last, uh, last little bit I want to have, have a talk about here is about these boys behind us and, uh, and their relatives. All these guys are descended from, from the wartime carriers and as we, as we know that the campaign couldn't have happened without the help of those wartime carriers. And there's this romantic notion that those carriers were brothers in arms and they volunteered willingly and that we were all hand in hand in this together. But more often than not, and the reality was that the conditions for the carriers and the way they rec were recruited was pretty harsh. I heard a story um, that all the men in the village were, were, were asked to line up and asked to put their arms in the air. And if you had grass under your arms, that meant you were old enough to carry. So if you boys would be definitely old enough to carry heavy loads, I mean, you guys have got six or seven kilos. These boys were carrying up to 10 times that much. But if they were carrying a wounded soldier back, and many, many Australians owe their lives to these carriers, there's never an, uh, a, an occasion where they dis disowned them or left them. They cared for them like a mother and, and got them back. And that's where that legend of that fuzzy wuzzy angel, as you may have heard that term, came from. So we have a joint history. And tomorrow we're playing a match against relatives of these guys. So the, the day that the Australians actually re-ended Kokoda is the 2nd of November. And they raised the flag uh, on the Kokoda, Kokoda Plateau on the 3rd. And you guys, lo and behold, are playing this match on the 3rd of November. So it's a big moment. It's much more than just a football match. It's a bonding of cultures. And I want you to re remember that when we do it. The young guns are now on the home stretch for the day and the fatigue is really starting to show. Just so over it, so sweaty, so water's just in my shoes, it's just not good, I'm not liking it. I thought, I did think it was gonna be a big challenge, but not as big as this. This is, I underestimated it a lot. Getting up and down the hills, it's just, it's just hard, it just hurts. But there remains one final challenge, an ascent that is legendary for sorting the men from the boys. Right, uh, this is the start of our last climb up to Urubaiwa. I could tell you how long it's going to take us, but I'm not, because the, the question is, are you prepared to do whatever it takes? Great, you don't need to know how long. Look sideways. There's a couple of people that are struggling and there's some that are doing really well. So get the team happening. Help each other, encourage each other. Yep, we've got a tough little climb. When we see the, the huts and we get onto the flat ground, your work's done. And just to make the final push all the more challenging, the boys have to trudge through a sudden PNG-style torrential downpour before arriving at the camp, where Jason, Michael and the other group have just arrived and are waiting for the young guns. Oh, excited, tired, want food, just, just, I, words can't explain it. Those mountains just kill you when you go up and then when you're coming down, your knees are giving way and then, it's raining and then everything's happening at once. Oh, I'm, I'm feeling heaps tired, like completely exhausted, all, all done a good job, proud of everyone. The achievement is great, just the excitement and everything, it's just a great experience and then it's kind of evened out by the feeling of just complete exhaustedness. <laughs> you, just, you just feel like sitting down but you just keep on going forward, never giving up. Hopefully we get a massive feed and just get to sleep. I hope so, so bad. 
and with relaxation comes a time for reflection. With one hurdle down, the young guns now have an opportunity to shift their focus and energy to their next big challenge, the upcoming game. It's the morning of game day, and still feeling the effects of the punishing past few days, the young guns must now once again dig deep for another physical challenge against a largely unknown opponent. However, before they get into game preparation mode, there is one very important stop to be made, one that will give the young men some greater perspective for their trip. This is Bamana War Cemetery. Um, there's nearly 4,000 graves here of Australian soldiers, sailors and airmen that, had, that passed away during the, uh, the, the, the Papua and New Guinea campaigns. So all re-interned here. Most 700 of those are unidentified. Seven, about 750 are unidentified. And there's also another 700 that were, that, that, uh, their remains were never found. We're gonna have a bit of a time for reflection here this morning, just to look back at the, the, those diggers that we, we, we'd spoken about over the last couple of days. Think of them with sorrow and with grief. There should be a third feeling, stronger than grief and greater than pride. A, a sense of fullness, fullness and achievement. To us, their lives may seem to be severely shortened, but in truth, they were full lives. It's not how many years a man lives that matters, but what he does with those years. And those that sleep here did much with theirs. When you have a look around, I want you to just have a look at the, the ages of some of these soldiers. They're not much older than you guys. And every single soldier that passed away and lies here went to their death knowing that they were saving Australia and giving you guys that opportunity to live the lives that you live. And you're going to get, get a chance in a minute to go and, to go and meet them and, and, and say your thanks. This guy was Lance Corporal and he got killed in 19. He was age 19 when he got killed. Um, well, I'm 14 now, and um, we got told that some of the kids were lying about their age to get in. So, like, they said they were 18, but they're only 16. Just to think that they're only two years older than us and they're going to war for our country. They're just so brave to go out and fight for us. Jerry Worthy was in the 3rd Infinity Infantry Battalion, and he died age 26 on the in 1942. It would take a lot of courage to go out there and fight. Like, you're gone for a couple of years and your family are going to miss you and when they get that call saying he's not coming back, it's, it's just sad for the families and, like, it just shows how brave they are and how grateful you've got to be for them. tough, we're going to work together because you, you showed us yesterday that you can do that, all right? If we get whacked, we get back up, we get whacked again, we get back up and we just keep on going. They're going to come out, they're going to want to win the game as well. I've only seen a couple of them, right? They're going to be raw talent. This is, this is raw talent football you're playing against. Win, lose or draw, it's an experience that you boys are going to get, okay? You just soak it up, just get in the atmosphere, get into the game, yeah? There's the field, boys. Post her up there, ready to go. Look at this, eh? This is unreal, boys. Soak it, win it, live the moment. Enjoy it. Welcome, uh, young guns uh, and the 16 Rapidos. Thank you, you have come a long way. Despite the age of the players, it's an international fixture. And as such, the tradition of a war dance and national anthems is honoured by the hosts setting an incredible scene for the visitors.
Which way? The intensity and determination to win is very clear from the kickoff, with both teams playing a physical, confrontational style. As the game progresses, the 1,000 plus strong crowd of rugby league fanatics, many of whom have walked long distances to watch the game, are rewarded with an impressive display of open, expansive play, as each team has opportunities to put points on the board. But after some impressive ball movement, the young guns score first. Not long after the opening try, and buoyed by crowd support, the local team draw equal, forcing the young guns to regroup, refocus, and reapply the pressure. And with the assistance of Waterboy Matt King, you gotta push, boys, you gotta push! the young guns respond with a second try. giving them a slim two-point lead going into half-time. This is now the back end of that game that we spoke about going up those hills yesterday. Because we are busted, don't we? Yep. We are fatigued. We are hot. You've got 25 minutes. You're leading by two points. This is what we spoke about last night. Still very much anyone's game, the second half begins, not surprisingly, with a renewed intensity, much to the enjoyment of the enthusiastic crowd. It's a hard-fought battle, but the weight of possession and territory pays off, and ultimately the balance of power tips in favour of the visitors, who find a gap and score. And with a renewed sense of confidence, it's not long until they seal a young gun's victory with their fourth try of the game. And as testament to the goodwill of the local people, the victorious young guns are given a hero's reception. Soak it up, you boys. Say hello. It's a welcome befitting rugby league stars, and for these young sportsmen, perhaps a brief glimpse into what may lay ahead for the future. It's a fitting end to what for the young guns has been so much more than just a holiday. Each one of these young men will be taking away essential lessons about mateship, courage, respect, and an ability to push through limits. Lessons that will put them ahead of the pack, both on and off the sporting field, for many years to come. I just want to say a very big thank you. We came over a group of us seven days ago and we walked the track and uh, you know we met a lot of people along the uh, track who were, have uh, probably touched us in many, many ways. You know, it's a, a memory of life that you're going to have for a long, long time. Well done, boys, and thank you very much. Thanks.